I now am pleased to present our next student speaker, Mr. Anatai Galgen. Anatai, a September graduate of the MFA in Writing Program, was named the Alumnus of the Year in 2011 by the Thailand United States Education Foundation, otherwise known as Fulbright Thailand. During his tenure as a researcher in languages and literature, Anatai hosted cultural events and exhibitions for the Thailand's Ministry of Culture and College of Dramatic Arts, and also wrote poems for the My First Book Project, which benefits underprivileged Thai students. Anatai's original work and translations were nominated for the Pushcart Prize for the Bluegrass Writers Studio in 2011, and he has work forthcoming in the Raintown Review and Structo, a British literary magazine. Recently, he won grand prize in the inaugural Gable Contest for Translation and Multilingual Texts, hosted by Lunch Ticket, Antioch University's Literary Review. Please welcome Anatai Kalkin. Thank you, Dr. Weitzel, um, faculty, friends, and family of this year's graduating class. Thank you for having me speak here today. It is definitely an honor for me, as someone who's always wanted to make a name for himself as a writer, to be able to share a few words with you, especially because, until recently, um, I had my doubts if I would ever actually make it as a published writer. Um, if I was just a phony or someone that appropriated the title without ever having the chops to back it up. Uh, you see, before I started the MFA program here at Lindenwood about two years ago now, I was under a cloud. For the greater part of two years, I'd been living in Bangkok, Thailand, as a researcher with the Fulbright Institute, with funding to chase a childhood dream of mine to become the preeminent translator of Asian literature into English. I thought I had it made. As a young graduate, I thought all the pieces for a satisfying writing career were falling into place for me. Over the course of 14 months, however, I got little accomplished. My days went by in frustration and boredom as I failed to meet deadline after deadline. By the end of my tenure, I thought I had wasted two years and a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Once I began the writing program at Lindenwood, however, as I was prompted to turn the details of my life into meaningful stories that readers could consume and explore, those months of aggravation and delay suddenly became a source of inspiration for me. The things I did and read to distract myself from the things I should have been doing actually became fodder for poems and essays that would eventually become published, even awarded, though at the time, um, I was simply trying to get by and not get my tenure canceled. And this is the idea that I want to share with you all today, that life's lessons are cumulative, and there is no skill so specialized, nor any knowledge so obscure, that you, it can't be instructive or that it might not one day prove valuable. Let me give you another example. While in Bangkok, um, I had to make ends meet more than the funding allowed. Um, so I moonlighted as a scriptwriter for an online travel series. It was a startup, and if someone had asked me as an undergrad if I'd ever be involved in such a thing, I would have told them no. I did, however, intern for a theater company in Chicago once upon a time. And I was required to do odd jobs like write short blogs for our donors, as well as um, write, um, write grants and press releases and to handle professional camera equipment. Although I couldn't have known it then, these seemingly random tasks one day prepared me to write short scripts for that online travel channel, uh, promoting tourism in Southeast Asia, one of the world's most popular travel destinations and it prepared me to help film and edit online sequences for their YouTube channel. Now, this story has an unhappy ending. The guy I worked for had little business sense, was always short on payroll, and treated like his staff like we were expendable. 
After several months of butting heads with me, however, he did land a sizable amount of funding and called to tell me that I have to move to a town three hours from my home to begin my full-time position working for him. How much time do I have to decide, was my question for him. He told me, 15 minutes. It, essentially, I told him to take a hike after that, and how vindicating and how rewarding that was. And this is the kind of wealth, I believe, that our skills and experiences offer us. Not wealth necessarily as money, because no one who graduates like I did with a master's in creative writing can really expect monetary reward. It is the wealth of opportunity and versatility, the resourcefulness to handle life's sundry challenges deftly, and the luxury of choice, the choice to pick and choose what you do, the ability to tell an unsavory boss no, and the, because you can shapeshift and market yourself in different ways. It is the type of versatility the Greeks celebrated in the character of Odysseus, the craftiest general at Troy. It is the type of resourcefulness admired in all the cunning and worldwide characters in our popular cultures, both ancient and modern. Therefore, never turn down the opportunity to learn or do something new, no matter how irrelevant or impractical you're told it is. A nonprofit internship, a course in quantum physics, a master's in creative writing. There is value in experience. There is value, as Lindenwood knows, in the liberal arts, in a liberal knowledge and understanding of the world around you. It could be that one day you look back at all the odd jobs, the arcane bits of information you memorized for your finals, and even all the failures you've endured to find that these seemingly unrelated points formed a constellation and discover in your life experiences, setbacks and all, the perfect curriculum for accomplishing what you've always wanted. Now, as a writer and poet, I'd like to close with this short proverb translated from the Thai. Wisdom is worth more than treasure, worth more than a kingdom. Its value measure in this way, because no outlaw ever can steal it from you, but with body and soul, wisdom will stay. So hurry and learn. Thank you and congratulations.